see here. I'm running. Got the chat. Oh, let's see. Let's see, what we got in here. Oh, the regular crew. Everybody looking nice, beautiful. All right, Alpha Traders. What's Bitcoin up to? <laughs> Lulling people to sleep. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, what, that's what it's doing. Because when it makes its move, it's gonna be it's gonna be an explosion of volatility. No doubt right. about it. I still got this projection up from the 28k low and the 41k low. We're bouncing around where these 95.4% Laplace distribution range just came together right here. We are just hovering around. A lot of indecision. A lot of indecision of what's going on with price action. Until you look at the charts and kind of get a uh, overall <laughs> look at what's really going on with the volatility. I'm still sticking to my guns. This thing's going to pop. It's the whole crypto market, right? Going to move to the upside. Let's see. What do we do today? Let's scale this up to get a good look. Yeah. So you can see pretty much right where we're at right now. The first standard deviation to the downside was 61,322. We're messing around that area right now. We dropped a little bit below it. What caught price action? The weekly volatility range. There's been a couple liquidity grabs. The one yesterday, the wick that went down into it, that was definitely a liquidity grab. Today, it's kind of hovering down there. Kind of hovering down there, trying to confuse everybody of what's going on. That's a great spot there is what you don't want to see. You don't want to see some 15-minute candles closing below that weekly volatility range. If it does, coming into this new day or the rest of today, you know, it, it's your job as a alpha trader to find out where these algos are sitting. Where where are the algos? Where are they going to bounce the price? Uh, yesterday, they were right at the bottom of the weekly volatility range, man, and it shot that 15-minute 15 15 candle right back up. Ended up a bullish candle. Right, thing dropped what almost three thousand dollars or something. I think it was like that, and then just sucked right back up in the same candle. So powerful, powerful little move. Let's uh, let's go over here under the BRE, the distribution levels, just to see exactly what's going on. You can see we opened up the new day, immediately came into the top side of the uh, sixty-eight point three Laplace distribution range on the four-hour candle. That's this white line top, white line bottom. The bottom was right by the bottom. Of the daily 68.3 Laplace distribution range ranged a little bit uh, above it for you know probably about for the through the first two four hour candles so a quarter of the day pretty much that's what happened let me get a good look here da, 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 da. or my bad third of the day <laughs> let's see we dipped down below it a couple times but right when you get this dip down here to the that, the right before the four hour close it pulled up above the daily right there. Then we really had a nice wick down, went up to test that 68.3% Laplace distribution range bottom. It's down. There's the top. Hasn't been tested yet today. Uh, first thing we did, we've got a wick down. There were some algos here waiting, right? Mm -hmm. Sucked that thing right back up and pumped it right to the bottom of the daily volatility range to the dollar. Rejection at the bottom of the daily volatility range. Two 15 minute candles right back to the first standard deviation on distribution. They're waiting there again. Popped it up. This time it went to the 68.3. Got a little bit above it. You can see what's going on here, right? I mean, it's just a battle of the bots. Happens every day on these low time frames. So we get this pullback from the 68.3. That wick went right to the center of the weekly volatility range. Then we got trapped up under this first standard deviation, normal distribution, in between the center of the weekly volatility range, which has been bouncing back and forth, back and forth. Now we're trying to close these 15-minute candles above this first standard deviation. You've got to remember. But there it is. There's the first standard deviation to the top side, okay, on this daily chart. That's the bottom side. There's a 68.3% chance. You're going to find BTC's data set closing in that range. That's that's why we uh, trade on these probabilities, right? If it goes beyond there, right, you're, you're, you're starting to get down to, here's the second standard deviation. That's the 95.4% range Laplace distribution. And the second standard deviation normal distribution is 95.4% as well. <laughs> Excuse me. 
uh, I saw all this coming together right here, and I was like, hmm, interesting indeed. I mean, there's a lot of confluence right in that area, but it seems like there's a lot of algos right here to going to keep this price action above the weekly volatility range. There's that wick from yesterday, which is a perfect wick, right? We open up. We open up this candle. This thing literally dumps right barely through the bottom of the weekly volatility range, pulls back up to the dollar right to the center of yesterday's daily volatility range. This is why we trade this, right? There's a reason why. When you're in alpha trading, everything's actionable, right? Everything that we've put together, you can rely on, right? Math doesn't break. Patterns break, you know? Uh, a lot of traditional, traditional TA will break. Everybody's going to trade their way. That's fine. I'm just saying, if you want something to really rely on, Volatility trading is definitely the way to go. Volatility creates everything. That's where these people get. This is why people that trade traditional TA, number one, they don't take their profit. If you're taking your profits, you could throw darts at a dartboard, long or short, long or short. And if you limit your losses and you take your profits, you're going to make some money. There's no doubt about it. You're going to be right 50% of the time. So this is what people need to realize is volatility is creating everything. And then you get a lot of traditional TA. They're lagging indicators. Why not get right to the nuts and bolts of the thing, right? All right. The volatility. The volatility is going to tell you everything you need to know. That's why if you're staring at volume, if you're staring at order books, stop, please. Just stop it. <laughs> that stuff is going to get you so wrecked. It's not funny. We don't want that. We don't want any, tr any retail traders getting wrecked. That's why we do what we do. And a lot of other people do what they do, right? Just some people don't trade the way we do, which is fine. It's all good. Uh, we need an endless supply of people on the other side of our volatility trades. That's what we always say. Come join the crowd. That's what we like to do. So this will be interesting to see how we end this day. Are we going to come up? We're going to test the 68.3 on the daily? Because you got to remember this too. Even though there's a 68.3% chance to close within this standard de first standard deviation range, there's also a 68.3% chance that we close inside this Laplace distribution range. So don't ever forget about that. So we're, the, the probability is on our side. 68.3% chance Bitcoin closes on top of this white cross line. That is the bottom 68.3%. Get over to laser read or our laser wolf chart here. I like seeing this. Okay, I noticed this before I came on stream. I was checking out the ninety-minute chart. Uh, we just got back up. These are the alpha trading deviation bands, right? Normal distribution, first, second, third standard deviation. Got a gauzing and mean. That's the white line. We this ninety-minute candle is above that gauzing and mean. Closes in what hour and twenty minutes here? About a half hour after we get off stream. Or, yeah, 20 minutes. So, going to be interesting to see if this 90 minute candle can stay above there. What are we doing down there? We expand that. Hmm. You can see we've got some red candles on the 90 minute. The entropy is kind of flat. It's in it's right on that borderline of trend and randomness, right? You want to see some nice bright blue color, right? And then the building correlation. That's when you get these nice big moves or the down moves. That's why with this indicator, the color of the entropy is coded into the candles, right? Very powerful. So you can just, yeah, a lot of the time, I'm looking down here, I'm looking, I want to see the correlation. What's the R squared telling me, right? What's the entropy price percentile telling me? Because the entropy is coded into the candles. I know what's what, right? Blue is trend. Everything else is pretty much random, right? And then when you get down into your, your bright pink and your yellow candle, totally random. This 15-minute candle and this pink candle, random. This is all random through here, right? Until we got this little down move on the 90-minute right here. And you can see it starts to build a negative correlation, right? Down we go. Happens every time. Every time indeed. And let's see here. You can see this that down move that I'm talking about that went into trend, what created it. Uh, let's see. Was there any divergence? Uh, yeah, from right here to here, there was some hidden bear, a little bit of hidden bear for sure. And to be honest, it's building right now, right? 
but that can all change. But I'm looking at variance. Variance is coming down now, positively correlated. It started coming down negatively correlated. So you get this walk up in price action. The Z score of historical volatility right now is one standard deviation below the mean. Blow this up. It is heading to the top side and it is positively correlated. So if this Z score can continue up while it's positively correlated, you're going to see a move to the upside. We love this brand new indicator. A lot of people should have got access to this today. I believe if you do have those indicator, if you do have that in, an indicator package, our ultimate power means, what are they telling me? Blow this up, take a peek here. And we got a nice upgrade, right? This isn't published yet. We're adding some color grading, some fun stuff that makes it look really cool. Yeah, all these power means are definitely, they've all shifted pink. But the uh, the reverse fissure, I like the slope still. That's another thing on this 90 minute. You're going to want to see this price action up above like 61.9 for sure. Or you're going to see this reverse fissure could start to slope to the downside and get a rejection there. Down we go. Just like this little data set right here rejected off of the central power mean. This data set right here sent a wick up to the reverse wave trend. So this is, uh, this is a great little indicator we put together. We just got some more work to do on it till it's done. Then I'm going to go over here onto the four hour real quick. Charts are loading good today. I think I might add a little something to do with my computer yesterday, to be honest. <clears throat> there is bull div, right? There's bull div. The thing is what I am seeing is that there are no histograms, right? Pink or blue. It's like the correlation is flat right now. It's not really giving you a good read. So, you know, we got a low, lower, low, low, lower, or sorry, <laughs> low, higher, low, low, lower, low. We do have some bear or some bull dip building, right? Uh, is what could happen here is we could possibly get one, this last four hour candle, maybe close down, make another lower low turn the returns oscillator down to bounce off the zero mean, then have a couple stabs of that bull dip between returns and price action. That is always a very powerful indeed. Let's take a look at uh, ABRs. Yeah, that's never good. You're also, you're going to want to see a close today above 51, 550-ish for sure, above the Gaussian mean. That's why this Gaussian mean is so powerful, right? We get that nice run on the four hour, starts bleeding out, starts closing four hour candles below it, right? So it's just riding it down. It's riding it down. But right, that always ends. It ends at some point. So we got to get a candle close above this Gaussian mean. It would also be nice to get, let's see if we got some confluence. Ah, not too close, but it's up there. Oh, uh, 61.9. Let's just say 62. You're going to want to see a four hour candle get back up above the central power mean and the uh, reverse wave trend. All of the uh, ultimate power means here have turned bearish too. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Where did this all start? The rejection off the reverse fissure. Okay. Powerful indicator that we put together here. Really tells you what's going on. We are contracting positively correlated. <sighs> Getting a little expansion negatively correlated, flat positively correlated. So all the AVRs on the four hour though, they are telling you down, right? But at the same time, you got this bull dip, but then you look at the variance, it's telling you down too. Um, this is an interesting read here, the Z-score. The, the correlation's starting to slope up, right? And it's uh, we're one standard deviations below the mean on the four hour too. There's a battle going on. That's what I'm seeing. All right. And of course there is. Why is there a battle going on? Because look where we're at. We're literally stuck between the bottom of the first standard deviation and the weekly volatility range. This thing's like stuck in the mud right here. The algos are just like playing ping pong right here. 100%. So whatever side, it's going to take a powerful move. Right. You're going to, you're definitely going to have these bears. They're, they're, they're definitely going to be defending the bottom of the 68.3. And the first standard deviation. Now here's the bulls down here. They're defending here. That's a super tight range. And we're probably, what was the total range today? About 23, 2400 bucks. We could have another tight daily volatility range coming in. 
But as of right now, right, if this price action stays right around here, it's the, the new day is going to open up below the new daily volatility range. And that's when you get in this last four hour candle, that's where the battle really begins. Don't think these algos don't know where these areas are. They do. It's proven fact, right? You can see where you get these bounces and rejections from. And considering the algorithmic trading is probably trading 80 to 90% of all these markets, I don't care what market it is. Hell, the little kids in their neighborhood trading beanie babies and Pokemon cards and crap. Their algos are even trading this stuff. <clears throat> push here this will be interesting let's go down some low time frames let's see what's happening see if there's any long term any type of dibs building um let's see. you can see the 15 minute that little run we just had rejected off the 15 minute reverse wave trend um we're getting back down but actually we're trying to cr climb right now you can see what is it pink or it's yellow right pink all, all this pink and yellow this is all random this is all random. I mean, my God, look at the correlation. You talk about indecision. I mean, we got red, green, red, green. Merry Christmas. It's a random Christmas. What are we getting? Nothing. All the container ships are stuck out in the ocean because we have an idiot for a present. We won't go in there. I can make a whole hour stream about that dumbass. <clears throat> let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, we did. We rejected off that reverse wave trend. But, you know, these candle closes are below the central power mean. We do have smoothing on this wave trend now. Uh, I've got an upgraded version. I just haven't loaded it because there's a couple bugs we need to fix. I'm waiting for that. But then once we get this wave trend smoothed out, too, it's going to be real nice. Then I'm really going to start playing with the smoothing to get some real exact reads because that's what it's all about, right? You just look back through time at data sets and you see what smoothing, where, where are these, where are the reverse wave trend, the central power mean, the reverse fissure? Uh, pretty much the reverse wave trend, reverse fissure up great settings right now. But when I add the smoothing to this wave trend, it's going to change it. So I'd have to dial that in. We'll see. We will see. Let me go over here. I hear I'm being summoned in the stream chat. <laughs> Uh, I've got no, I've got no, uh, yeah, cool, Donnie. Um, I, I, I don't have any, jeez, I'm tongue tied. My drift is off. Is that what you're saying? The one on mana? Yeah, my drifts aren't on right now. I, I will, I'll turn my drift on. I'll turn drift on, drift off. Yeah, so, and I will see, you know, what's being respected. What what looks what what looks like it's being um, respected? That's what it's always going to take precedent of whether I have it on or off, and that goes for options too. If I'm looking for strikes, you know, sixty days out, that's what these things are really good for too, right? But at the same time, if you're scalping delta on low time frames or just trying to get an idea of what's going on, these things so powerful as hell. I mean, the Z score of historical volatility is heading to the downside, negatively correlated. So that's always going to uh, price action is going to walk up. And people see people don't understand the way this stuff works. They'll be like, "Well, you know, the Z score is heading heading to the down to the downside of the standard deviation range, right?" And it's like, "Yeah, but the correlation means everything. Can't stress that enough. Cannot stress that enough." Uh, just lately here, there is some hidden bull on the DLP, and there's some hidden bull on the returns oscillator, and there's some hidden bull on the Z-score of log return. That's what I was talking to somebody in the chat earlier. It's very important. This Wolf Spain indicator is very powerful, but is what you need to realize is that I'm always going to go with what I'm reading on the returns oscillator. You might get a different read on the uh, Z-score of log returns. Shorten the length on that. Go from a 30 to a 15 or a 30 to a 7, things of that nature. You drop that down to about a 7, you're probably going to get the same read as you're getting on the returns oscillator because that's what I have it set on as well. So I'm always going to uh, I'm gonna put precedent on that freaking returns oscillator. And this was going back to the daily. All right? 
where you know somebody was saying there's bear div on the daily and there absolutely is not any bear div on the daily right now if you're going way back here if you're going way back here there's a little bit of hidden bear but it's not going to play out like regular bear div right and it's a continuation divergence and it was there too right so you just get this little continuation of the move down to and, and then at some point you're going to get some, like, so let's see on this data set. Yeah, it's building a little bit of hidden bull now. A little bit of hidden bull. But if you go way back to this data set, let's see, is that a lower low? Uh, that's where the battle's at right now. There is no div. It's building on the returns oscillator over time. Yeah, the price action's kind of staying in that range. <laughs>to be honest this z score is right at the first standard deviation to the downside it is going sideways you know i mean it's sloping up a little bit and you can see the correlations barely sloping down both of these are pretty flat like nothing's really happening right now. this is not the easiest thing to read but i'm looking on the daily right here what is sticking out to you on the side of the chart why should you be paying attention right now right You've got the correlation for the entropy flashing, right? It's literally zeros. Then you've got the low length ABR is literally the volatility's crushed. Volatility's crushed on both of these. They all are. I mean, you're talking about a 13 volatility rate. That's pretty damn low. Uh, right now, everything's negatively correlated, right? So it's going to depend on are we going to have some volatility come in, right? Now, that's where you pay attention. If you have a lot of volatility come in, and you see some, you know, you see these new daily candles start to pop on all three of these, you're going to want to pay attention to the correlation. Because if it's negatively correlated still, you're going to see a down move. But if they all turn positively correlated, you're going to see it faster on the 636, right? Because it's the lowest length. Uh, right now, my Z-score on Wolf's Bane is on a 30. It's on a 30. I'll show it. And, uh, oops, get off that. You just change it, right? It's going to match up a lot better with the freaking returns oscillator. So I went from a 30 to a 7. So yeah, there's no div, just like there's no div on the returns oscillator. But you throw it on a 30, and there is a little bear div on the on the uh, Z-score of log returns. So yeah, and that's, that's where you guys get to play with these indicators, all right? I mean, the variance, blow this up. I mean, we're, we're, we're heading up. It is heading up. I mean, I'd like to see, I'd like to see that slope a little, little taller right there. Cause it is positively correlated. Let me see. Yeah. See, that's the thing. you close this daily candle lower. It's just building some uh, bear or bull div. And like right now it is, I mean, it's building on the returns oscillator hidden bull. So we're just going to see how this day ends. It's all we can do. Yep, you're welcome. But yeah, that's why that's why these indicators are open. Right? You can just you can change whatever you want. If you screw something up, just reset it to the default settings as it came. And you can work from the base like that. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to be on the set. Let's see here. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the daily chart looks pretty good, actually. And uh, this is what I'm waiting for, right? At least for a longer term move. This is just telling you, cor I mean, the correlation of the entropy, not only is the entropy random right now, and it's been random since we had that nice run on the daily. 
So on the daily chart, hell, it's, I mean, this was, uh, this was the closest we had. I mean, there's a little bit of trend right there. And that was that update we had. So yeah, right now, total randomness, total randomness in the market. Let me go here. Boom. Let's go to a two day. Let's see when we get a new two day candle. Let's see if those things change. Okay. It's a damn day today. Wow. Almost. It is the fourth today. We get a new two day today. Two day. Actually, size that. Yeah, I mean that's that's these these this that these two bullish candles. I mean, they are all pretty much the same. Even this one back here, it's barely a tick difference. Let's see the downside. There's no bull div. I mean, there's some. There's definitely some bull div on the Z score of log returns. You can see on the two day, the variance is sloping down, negatively correlated. Uh, Z score of log returns kind of flat, 0.7 standard deviation on the top side, uh, sloping up, positively correlated. So let's see what happens when we get this two day candle close, all right? We're going to get Z score on the two day, going to pop back up to the upside, positively correlated. We're going to have a move. 981 AVR positively correlated expanding that you got to 2400. You know, I mean, it's contracting, but either way, contracting just a little bit, even flat volatility positively correlated, price action is going to walk down. All right. And we're actually negatively correlated expanding a little bit. So you're going to have, yeah, big fat body, barely, so barely a little candle. Tony, that 981, though, is pretty damn powerful. We got more of a bullish wick on that than anything. 61,760 is the Gaussian mean on this two day. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we 61,760. Yeah, I mean, that's not too hard. I mean, hell, we're talking about just right in this area. Right? We're going to get a little run. And we close the daily up here by the bottom side of the, uh, or wait. That's the first standard deviation on the four hour to the top side. 62K. See if we can close up there around 62K. That would definitely look good. Consider this is two day. Pop this back. Yeah, there's no there's no bear divs on the uh on the uh DLP as well. I mean when we were having this run on the daily, right? On the two day, it was, it was correlation was increasing to the top side and it was trending. I mean, we're pretty much it's all random right now. We see, we're seeing that on a lot of time frames. A lot of randomness right now happening. We get a three day. Let's get a three day today too. Yep, get a three day today too. No, we don't. My bad. Tomorrow we get a three day, which is fine. Uh, but I mean, you look at the variance. I mean, the thing is just going sideways, negatively correlated. Right. And, you know, log returns a Z score. Right. What's that building? A little bit of freaking hidden bull div. There is none on. Let's see here. From way, from way back here. Yeah. You can see there was some hidden bull div from this low, lower low, low, higher low. We did get this continuation. At the same time. Yeah. No, we're good there. We are good there, actually. Yeah, a little bit of hidden bear. And that's why this three day candle's down, right? From this point right here, lower low here. Then you come up here and it is a higher high. Sure. Candle boom. So we're getting this little down move today. This I like, right? On the for a three day, right? Three days flashing. We're getting some expansion on this three day candle and it's positively correlated. That is always real nice. Uh, kind of flat volatility. I mean, just a little tick of the expansion negatively correlated, right? So you got the battle going on here, but you know, the high length one, a little bit of contraction, contracting, negatively correlated. Beautiful. You're going to have a doji again, more of a bullwick though. And I like this, right? So we're above the Gaussian mean on the three day. That is beautiful. And the Z score of historical volatility. 
heading to the downside, right? Right now we're 1.26 standard deviations below the mean and it's negatively correlated. That's why when people that use Z-score or you know use volatility, when you realize correlation is so important, you'll finally start to get it, all right? There's a lot of people out there that just wanna, he didn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, okay, no problem. Continue doing what you do. Yeah, you don't have the deviation bands? MJ, get say around those uh, deviation bands. For sure they are. You're talking about these over here, right? Yeah, man, they're available. They're available. We got lots of wolves barking. It's just like we get used sometimes. We get a little bit behind the eight ball. Get to give people some access. What did I just find here? Why do I need this on my bed? We have, of course, I don't even have to say where I bought them, right? <laughs> we have Trader Joe's Rosemary Marcona Almond. Oh, they're delicious too. All right, where are we going? I like the two day and I like the three day. It's not going to weekly. Let's go to the seven day first. But Bilbo, the seven day and the weekly is the same. No, it's not. No, it's not at all. Look at the charts, you'll see. Mm. Turns are above the mean. I like. Um, there is no bear dip. I mean, on this seven day, when did we get a new seven day candle? Today. Wow. It's the fourth, correct? Yeah, 29, 30, 31, one, two, three, four. Seven day candle. We get a new seven day candle today. So, yeah. <laughs> um, boy, it would be. Boy, look how this candle, too, man. It is just stuck right in between these freaking uh, uh, standard air bands. Mm -hmm. It's above the mean of them, though. Let's see right here. One, almost 1 1.5 standard deviations below the mean, and it is negatively correlated and heading up. So let's see what happens today. Look at that seven day candle, too, man. Doji, right? Actually, and I like the seven day, right? I love the seven day. I mean, everything, all the power means, all 15 of these puppies are sloping up. So is the reverse Fisher, obviously. So is the reverse wave trend. See. So we're negatively correlated, contracting here. We're positively correlated, uh, 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 contracting here, right? So the, the this is saying walk up. This is saying walk down. But look, look, look what we got here on the 2400. This is just what's making this a doji candle because this is just sideways volatility, negatively correlated. You want to see this seven days start to trend, man. Right? Look at that, right? And you get a nice trend going on the seven day. Hello, right? We rocket ship from where? Down there at about 10K. Yeah, 10.5. You get that run to all time highs. Power of the That's the thing right here. This latest run up, this is all random. Man. All random. Correlations definitely increasing to the top side. Hey, that's very powerful, man. If this thing were to drop in the trend, why that correlation? Oof. 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 We'll be dancing around $100,000. I like the variance on the seven day coming down, negatively correlated. Um, that is some hidden bear div. Let's see what happens with this close today. Let's see if this returns oscillator turns up, right? That's why you got to be careful. And what have I said about the correlation of the returns oscillator, right? The correlation is saying, no, 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 no. Be really careful. Be really careful reading that divergence because it's not it's not correlated with price action at all, which is good to see. Let's see if we open up a new seven day, we can the variance continues to come down maybe a little bit. We get a bounce on the returns oscillator to the top side here, and then we start getting a blue histogram. We get the correlation on the uh, Z-score of historical volatility start to slope back up. And, and the Z-score actually starts to move 
back over to the right side of the curve. Towards the curve. So, but I mean, that's actually good. I mean, because this candle's a little bit. You can see, right? It's it's a lower high. It's a lower high for sure. So this DLP is not scaring me, that being a lower high. That was the other way around, right? If that was a flush candle up here, be seeing some more downside before. Uh, and get it straight, man. The, the, they're, they're trying to shake people to just get them where they have no idea where this thing's going, right? And plus, right, these bears are running for their freaking lives, running for their lives, whatever these bears are doing. Watch the scumbags. <laughs> Sit around, get high on honey all day, and just want Bitcoin to go down. Some men just want to see the world burn. I'm not one of those men. Just release the kraken. Let's see Bitcoin eat eat every asset class on the planet. Right, get like a ninety trillion dollar market cap. Nothing wrong with that. We'll all have a party. Now let's go to the weekly. Um, well, I haven't hit the weekly yet. That was the seven day. Let's look right now. We're on the weekly right now. The weekly's pretty similar. Um, yeah, but look at the histogram. Hidden bear dibs, but look at the histogram of the re of the returns oscillator. The correlation is 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 to the downside, right? Decreasing is what that means. So the read you're getting from the returns oscillator and price action, be careful. Don't just blindly go into some short here because the correlation is not positive at all. And you got the variance coming down negatively correlated. Now look on the weekly though, a significant positive correlation. Uh, if you see on this new week, you know, boom, we start getting a move to the upside and this Z score starts running back up. Like it's 1.25 approximately standard deviations to the downside. So uh, yeah. You're going to want to see that turn up, start to move back past the mean, right? Get up here. Let's see the Z score on the weekly end up up here like the 99% uh, uh, confidence interval. You'll definitely see Bitcoin at some high prices if that happens. DLP looks good, just flat. Boop, 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 boop. I mean, flat. All four of those candles. Holy crap. That's pretty interesting right there. Now, what's that telling you? This thing is just humming. This thing is vibrating. And we're getting the same damn read. That's why in the weekly, too, big time doji. All right. I mean, does it get more of a doji than this weekly candle we have right now? Volatility creates the candles. You got the low length saying walk up. You got the mid length saying walk down. And you've got the high length, barely some contraction, but it's saying walk up. So we're creating a doji. And the same with the entropy. Okay. This latest run up, all random. Looks very similar to the uh, to the seven day, but you can see DLP is way different. The uh, uh, C score for historical volatility is way different. There is, I mean, there's actually on the bottom side, there's no bull dips. There's actually on the Z score of log returns, there's no div at all. It's just this high we got back here. But see, and that's why we're getting this read kind of. I mean, that's a that's a weird spot, right? You want to look at data set tops like right here, right? And what do you got right there? You can see it got under, but that's where it is right there. So you got high, higher highs. High, higher high. All right, so it's just kind of, uh, we'll see what happens. Like I said, we close this weekly working just like on the seven day that we closed today, you're going to want to see this bounce off the zero mean to the top side, even if let's, let's get the variance turned up positively correlated. Let's get this party moving. Shit's getting bored.
uh, on the weekly, right? We're above the Gaussian mean. All this indecision the last three weeks. Doji, doji, doji. They're coming down, though. I mean, look at that. Coming down, testing that Gaussian mean every these last two weeks. That's what we've done. And even when we dropped below that Gaussian mean, right, and had that uh, 41K low right there, boom, bounced right off the first standard deviation band weekly. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yeah, I just I just explained that. I mean, there's really no hidden bear if you really, if you connect the data sets. I mean, because this top right here, I mean, you're in the middle of that. I mean, you can't, you can't say that that's the top of the data set. Hell, we're continuing to go up. This is the candle right here. That's the top of the data set. This was the top of the data set because we did have a bearish candle after it, right? But you can see, I mean, that's right here. You got higher highs, you got higher highs. So it's all good. There isn't actually, there's no hidden bear. There's no hidden bear. Interesting. That's, uh, it's gonna let me pop on herbs on the four hour or on the uh, 45 minute chart real quick. Hmm. See the bull dip, right? On the returns oscillator. That's the latest low four hour candle, right? That local low right there. So that's still playing out. But you got this return oscillator pretty high. But what was what's good? It's not building any kind of bear divs at all. Right? High, lower high, high, lower high. It's looking good. Looking good, actually. Very good. But yeah, that's gonna wrap her up for Bitcoin. Time is at 240. Let's go over here real quick. I often traders, let's check out Solana. Well, shall we? Should we check out Solana? Let's take a peek on the daily real quick. Actually, we are going to start. Dun, dun. Okay, let's see here. That will work right there. Actually, yeah, this is a long time. Long time. We're definitely going to move those scales down a little bit. Actually, let me turn off stops in normal distribution. Current candle reads. I kind of do like to start from here. You can see how it ran up to the 95.4% Laplace distribution range, bounced off the top of the 68.3. Now it's making its way back up here. What's that? Almost $300 Solana at the 95.4. And we're talking, hmm, let's even go to, let's go to the middle of November, right? We're talking $327 Solana, but it makes its way day by day, just a little chunking away at it. And if it breaks through there, you're probably gonna wanna look to, you know where I wanna put that actually? Let's on this down there now if that was that that i can handle because that's more of a definitely a bearish bearish 57 just in 57 57 you're in candle head holy crap yeah you can see i mean the 95.4 kind of supported this price action on solana right now it's slowly worked up had a little bit of a rejection here at the mean drop back down below it now we're back above it again and the 68.3 and the 95.4 are coming together right about here at about a 315 dollars salon in the next about four days let's look for that let's look for that that could be a powerful little booger yeah i like those three let's see time yeah yeah i do like that Grande, grande. Now let's pop on Solana real quick. I know I did this yesterday. I want to check it again. Now let's see what happened today. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So what has Solana been doing? Pretty much. I mean, it, it's in between the bottom side of the 68.3 and the first standard deviation to the downside. 
just ranging through here. You're probably going to get a nice tight range on this new daily for Solana. See this candle right here, just rejected off the four hour one SD. Power little booger. Had this nice little pump though. Got it back into the 68.3 Laplace distribution range on the daily, right? 68.3% of the time. You're going to find Solana's data set at the end of the day, right in here. 100%. Yeah, this is definitely a ranging day, big time. Ranging day, big time. Well, you had a nice wide daily volatility range, right? Big one. Nice big fella right there. Boom, boom, boom. You had the one SD right dead in the middle. This wick right here came down, literally tested this monthly level, right? And the freaking first standard deviation in the center of the daily volatility range. Had a few rejections off the bottom side of the 68.3, dicked around a little bit. Now we're right back up in here. Go Solana. They'll just take everybody to the moon. Why not? Make my NFTs worth more money. Shit. So, so I'm going to be checking this out at the end of the day, right? This could be a nice little perp trade in 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 uh in process in progress right here. I want to see how tight this daily range is going to be. Make a mental note of that, folks. I want to check that out. Solana could go on a nice run if it is tight. But right, like right now, where's this new daily volatility range going to be? This six days pushed down a little bit, man. That was almost all day. This thing just range in here. Depending on how this ends, this thing just goes on a mission till the end of the day, gets up around 250, right? Up here somewhere, you could probably see the top of the daily, maybe a tight range right in here, right in here somewhere, back around 244, 245, get a quick pullback, test that daily range and rocket ship the hell out of uh, Dodge. Real nice. So what are we gonna do? let's go over here on the daily Solana chart. Holy shit. <sighs> wow. This shit hasn't even started, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the volatility, right? I mean, this is it. When you see this flashing like this, you better wake up. <laughs> We're dropping into trend. Yeah, man. I'm going to post this chart in another Discord, too. Somebody was asking some questions about where I think Solana's going. It'd be like probably the dark side of the moon. Um, Just all depending, though. Everything's positively correlated, right? So you open up these new days and really get some strong volatility coming in and this this strong trend continues you see the z score of historical volatility really start to climb back above the mean positively correlated be nice and powerful big time there is no bear divs at all that is just a clean chart right there very clean now the variance is pretty high right still having an outlier though this thing could just go sideways having an outlier, right? Go up, but at some point, right, that variance has got to come back down. And when it does, you're going to want to see it turn negatively correlated. That's all. That's why people, this, that's why this is an RSI. This isn't stochastic. So shit doesn't just get stuck. It's going to turn around. It's going to come down. The correlation means everything. So you're getting this nice move to the upside, positively correlated uh, statistical outlier variance turns down and it's negatively correlated it's going to continue walking right to the upside yeah, looks really good. yeah man it's volatility these deviation bands are expanding too see how it just rode that gaussian mean this is a nice little daily candle too hammer time right hammer time but what created that volatility creates it this one for sure. This is interesting though, man. To have a candle really looking like that, I would have expected to see this negatively correlated, this contracting, right? And probably the low length. I mean, blow this up. Is there a little bit of expansion there? Boy, there's not. I think it's positively correlated. Saying a walk down, then you're positively correlated, contracting. Saying walk down. Hey, right. Solana's breaking the rules. What can you say? Yep, Ascari, I will see you later. See the 12 hour. Now the 12 hour is is the 12 hour saying go, go, go. Okay. So maybe that's influencing that daily read for sure. Variance coming down negatively correlated. Z score coming down negatively correlated. 
Uh, there is a little bit of bare dead building. DLP. As you can see, we're getting a nice bright green candle dropping back down. Trend is strengthening. Trend is strengthening. Boy, that just changed right there. That was positively correlated. It's like contracting, negatively correlated there. Walk up, walk up. Now this is saying down. So maybe by the end of the day, this thing does uh, pull back a little bit if it stays like that. Four hours dropping back down trend. Nice strong candle on the DLP, but same thing, building some bear div there. But look at the Z score heading back up, positively correlated. Variance is positively correlated. Returns oscillator heading up strong. We want to see this Z, Z score log. Let me uh, actually. Oh, J horses. Let's flip this baby back. This is like on the third direction. Yeah, okay. It's a better read. It is turned up too. Yeah, Solana looks good, man. Solana looks good. I think I'm, I think I hold a little bit of this. Uh, good stuff. That's how we made. And I got to get a five day chart up on these two. I'll, I'll work that up for the stream tomorrow. All right. Yep. Let's do this. Glad I just saw that, bud. That we want USDT. Tether. Where's that at? Bing Bong. What the hell is Bing Bong? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Uh, there we go. B chain Tether binding. So how's that? He said seven day. Because it is closed in the day. Smart man. Hmm. Yeah, that's the only problem, man. You're not getting, you're not getting a ton of history. Shit, the variants won't even populate, which is a bummer. Um, I mean, it's above the Gaussian mean. I'll tell you that. It's definitely above the Gaussian mean. Pretty much, they're all con these two ABRs contracting. This usually definitely ebb and flows right into a pump. And look at the correlation, all right? Look at the correlation. I don't even have to look. You can see it here. You're actually, is it given a read? Yeah, or not really, just because uh, that entropy is not. But I could imagine it's probably trending. It's probably trending, but that's a strong correlation. That's for damn sure. Um, Z score, I mean, we're two standard deviations below the mean, and it is sloping negatively correlated. So we're getting this nice walk up here. Uh, looks like the DLP is starting to creep up too. Get back up above here. Start moving to the upside. Like I said, the returns oscillator definitely moving up above the zero mean. Um, there's no div at all. I mean, pretty much it's it's right at where that data set is. So it's what you want to see. A lot of volatility come in here. Get this expansion rocking and rolling, positively correlated. Get this returns oscillator above that high. And there's no problems with the bet. But let's uh get a you know, the daily. Yeah, you can see on the daily dropping into trend. Yeah, but holy oh crap, man. Same thing. Maybe it'll be correlated, expanding. Then you're flat negative here. So that's supporting you. So is the Z score of historical volatility heading back up. So 1.2 standard deviations below the mean, positively correlated to the top side. Returns oscillator looks good. There is no div. There's no div. There's a little bit of div. I guarantee you, though, if you change the length on this Z-score log returns, you're going to get a way different read. Way different read. But the correlation is definitely decreasing between returns and the price action. Like I said, though, there is literally no div at all. I mean, if you want to go way back here to this pump, right? But, I mean, that's a long time. That is a long time. To really see that, to see if that div would still be uh, uh, be good, you would want to change the length of that returns oscillator to that many candles, right? That, that's that's how you do that. If you want to see if a divergence is still valid, count the candles, 
change the length of your oscillator to that. Most of the time, you're probably going to see that disappear. It's that was pretty high. I don't know. Why not? Um, hmm. Yeah, man, that's about it. Um, yeah, I suppose I can. Four. It's actually still there. It's been building too. All right. Got all higher highs, all lower highs. Look how small that is too. But man, we're above the zero mean. You're having an outlier on the variance. So all this has got to do, you get it. That, uh, we showed you the volatility expand, the volatility, right? I mean, especially look at this on the daily. And this, this thing is. Priming for a freaking move, right? Priming for a move. I mean, it's going to two cents or it's going to freaking. I should have sold everything. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's probably going to two cents or back to a penny, man. But right, I mean, dude, everything's going to follow. Everything's following Bitcoin. What's Bitcoin going to do? We all know this. This market, in no way, shape, or form, nothing is decoupling from Bitcoin besides probably gaming. Right, especially the stronger this this uh, blockchain gaming gets, that is going to be what decouples from Bitcoin. You'll see Bitcoin in a in a in a pullback. Right, I don't believe in Bitcoin bear markets. Look at it on the quarterly chart since the beginning of the time, and tell me there's been a bear market. Smack, smack. This thing is bullish as all get out. But you have a nice thirty percent pullback on Bitcoin. You you could see gaming go through the roof. Right, because the people aren't going to stop playing games, they're going to continue, and that's what's great about these gaming tokens, right? To play the game, and you got to get the token, so it's uh pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. And I am, uh, yes, heavily involved in quite a few projects, so uh, yes, <laughs> hilarious, he is our ambassador to Zambia. <laughs> good guy, there, good guy. All you scouts, go in there and give him some, give him some, give him some praise. He is a good man. Give us a little shock. Let's see here. Him and bit by bit, by bits must be busy, huh? Six and your mom's working, huh, bud? <clears throat> Let's see here. Yeah, that 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 looks okay though, man. I mean that like I, I mean I can't see that seven day trend going on with the. Uh, with the uh, entropy, but the daily is dropping heavily in the trends. That's looking good. Look at it. pull back. That's probably about it. Yeah, so yeah, we've got a little read on the bet. Got a nice little read on Solana. Bet and Solana look real good. Now we're going to have to see how Bitcoin plays out here. What it wants to do, a lot of indecision in the market right now. Like I said, the rest of this week, I mean, man, we're 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 just hanging out above that weekly range. Hanging out above this weekly range. Big time. Now you see a wick like this jump down into there. That's why I'm telling you, it didn't get there. Yeah, there, there's some sneaky little robots down here. I saw this last four hour one SD down here too. And I was like, hey, go, go, go ahead. Send a wick down there. Let's see what happens. You could get an explosion. You really could. That's our job, reading these charts. Where are these algos at? Where are the algos at? And they are down here just waiting for these bears. That's why it's like, yeah, quit wasting your time. Let this thing pop. Let it pop. All right, guys. So, all you YouTubers out there, we are alpha trading. We trade volatility, probability, and statistics. And we love teaching people how to do the same. 
The link to our Discord is in the description of all of our videos. Come check us out. Follow the welcome message, right? Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching live in the Discord. That's a great, that's one of the great things about joining our Discord, right? You can watch these live streams in the Discord before they even come out on YouTube. Although our video guys, they have these things up so fast. Pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. Shout out to MJ and Yasha. Our video people. So all that being said, I like the way the crypto markets are looking. I mean, obviously, I don't even need to talk about traditional markets. They got the burr. They're cranking the burr machine, propping up the stock market. So that thing is just, I guess, just going to go up until the balloon pops. And all that being said, wherever you live at on this big, beautiful blue marble, have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening. Say bye to everybody, Wolf. Bye. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Cheers. Thank you.